Hello students, Ms. Swanson here and welcome to the third episode on how to write proper lab reports. Today we're taking a look at hypotheses. Hypotheses, that's just the plural form of hypothesis. So before we can take a look at our hypotheses, we need to understand the different types of variables. There are three types of variables that we're going to study. Uh, if you watched the video already on title pages, you would have seen these already, but we'll just do this as a review, especially if you haven't seen that video yet. So the first one is the independent variable. Independent variable is the thing that the scientist changes. So if, uh, let's say, we're looking at a bunch of plants, and we give the first one a certain amount of water, the next one twice the amount of water, and the third one the three times the amount of water, then the thing that we are changing is the amount of water. And sometimes this is known as the cause. So the second type of variable is the dependent variable. And this is the thing that we are actually measuring, or sometimes it's called the effect. So in the case with our plants, maybe we're measuring how much they grow in height. So in that case, the dependent variable is that height growth, and it's caused by the amount of water that we're giving them. Now the last type of variable, one that some students tend to forget about, is called confounding variable, or sometimes it's known as interfering variable. These are things that will have an effect that we're measuring, but isn't due to the cause that we're actually looking for. So our independent variable will cause a certain effect, but these things will also cause that effect, and they're not what we're interested in studying. So for the example above, maybe there's uh, our plants are outside in the sun, and some of them are closer to the sun, it's more direct sunlight, some of them are further, or maybe they're in shade. And so at the end of the day, when we're measuring their height, we don't know if that's because of the amount of water they got, or if it's because of the amount of sunlight that they got. So an interfering or confounding variable kind of screws up our experiment. So we don't want to have those as problems, so we usually have to control for those variables. So how do we actually deal with our hypotheses? Well, first thing, we need to know the difference between a hypothesis and a prediction. Predictions are things that we tend to do every day in life. So it's just something that we think is going to happen. We make a certain prediction. A hypothesis, on the other hand, is based on prior information or prior knowledge. When you're writing a lab report, it must be a hypothesis, not a prediction. So there has to be a reason that you are saying what's going to happen or why you think that's going to happen. There's got to be some reason for it. It's not just, well, I think this chemical is going to turn into this other chemical. Well, why? Why do you think that's going to happen? And that needs to be very explicit in your hypothesis, your reasoning behind this. So let's look at a great format for writing your hypotheses that will include that hypothesis aspect. So it's not just a prediction, but it's also a hypothesis. In the past, you may have learned of if-then statements. To me, these are not very useful as hypotheses. They're great for predictions, but for hypothesis, if, then, because, and that because gets at that whole different aspect of why something is happening rather than just making a, some prediction about it. So if, and then you would state the change in the independent variable, then, and you'd state the change in the dependent variable, and then because, and then you'd state any relevant information. So here's an example. If the total running distance is increased by one kilometer per week, then, the endurance in rowing will increase because running endurance and rowing endurance are directly proportional. And anyone who's a rower, they tend to do a lot of running, so maybe this is why. I'm not sure I just made this one up. But you can see there's the if, then, the because, and it's very clear the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the relevant information. So let's take a look at some faulty hypotheses and how to fix these. These are things that I see very regularly in student reports. So the first one, lack of reasoning, like I've said, we need to explain why we're making that hypothesis. So bad hypothesis, if a plant is put in an environment without carbon dioxide, it will stop growing. Why? What's your reasoning? How about a better hypothesis? If a plant is put in an environment without carbon dioxide, it will stop growing because plants need carbon dioxide to produce the sugars needed for growth. So that would be a better example of a hypothesis. 
Another one, this is a major issue for students throughout their lab reports, personal pronouns. Things like I, me, we, us, our, all of those are personal pronouns that we cannot use in lab reports. So a bad hypothesis, I think that if I put one plant in the dark and one in the light, then the one in the light will grow faster since plants need light. Well, you've got I in there and you've actually got it in there twice. Not a good thing for a lab report. So better hypothesis, if one plant is put in the dark and one is put in the light, then the one in the light will grow faster since plants need light. So in that case, we've gotten rid of those uh, personal pronouns. Here we've got one where the independent variables and the dependent variables really aren't very clear. And in fact, this is really just explaining the because and it's missed the whole if then part. So the leaves of the plant, uh, leaves of that plant will turn pink because of adhesion and cohesion of water molecules. Well, that's not very clear at all what you think is going to happen. A better hypothesis, if one plant is put in a glass of water with pink dye and the other in regular water, then the leaves of the plant in pink water will turn pink because of adhesion and cohesion of the water molecules. And then this last one, this is if you're looking for those really, really top marks on your lab, be as specific as possible in your hypothesis to really eliminate any of those confounding or interfering variables. So a bad hypothesis, if the light is increased, then the stomata will open since they need light. A better hypothesis with lots of details in there, if the light is increased from 800 lumens to 1600 lumens in increments of 200 lumens at a time, then an increasing percentage of the leaf stomata will open because an increased light intensity is conducive to photosynthesis, which requires stomatal opening. So you can see there's a ton of information there. It doesn't just say we're going to increase it, but it says from the starting to the ending value and the increments along the way. And it states that we're looking at the percentage of stomatal opening, not just that they are going to open. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.